to resume. There we go. Great. Well, good evening. Welcome, everyone. My name is Dave Huxtable, and I am Director of Finance for the Orange County Chapter of the International Coaching Federation. And with me this evening, I have Nanor, our illustrious president. And, and Doug and Greta, our illustrious other board meetings. The board, me, board meetings, members. board members. I haven't had that much wine yet. And <laughs> it gives me enormous pleasure to welcome our speaker for this evening, who is Denise Hedges. And she is joining us from, was it North Carolina, Denise? Yes. So it's already late over there. So thank you very much for staying up to be with us. Um, it's magnificent to have you. Denise is an international business development coach and speaking coach, and she has over 30 years of experience in sales and marketing. She has helped thousands of coaches and other professionals with private practices move past any uncertainty or fear that they have about sales and marketing. I can definitely relate to the idea of having fear about sales and marketing and that has helped them attract more clients and make a lot more money so there you go she helps coaches refine their marketing efforts and she specializes in helping coaches who want to grow their business excuse me who want to grow their businesses using the strategy of speaking she's also an expert in sales and that's what we're going to focus on this evening She's a PCC through the ICF, and she's also a member of the Coach University faculty training life and business coaches worldwide. Now, this <coughs> evening, Denise is going to teach us how to sell our services without any hype or manipulation, and I like the sound of that, using the ICF core competencies, and I like the sound of that even more. Now, this is going to be very interactive, so please make sure that you have your cameras on um, so that we can see your gorgeous faces. So get ready to stretch and play as Denise coaches us on how to close more sales and get comfortable with the process. And we have given, you know, we have a very strict policy of no selling from the stage, but we have given Denise a special dispensation that at the end of this evening, she will be able to demonstrate what she has been teaching us, what she's been coaching us in, and she will do a brief and very classy offer just to, just to show us what she's been talking about. So let's give Denise a very, very, very warm welcome. Thank you, everybody. I wish I could be out there in California with you. That was the original plan. It would have been wonderful. Yeah. So I want to start by telling you a story. It's my story, at least a small part of it. And I want to wind back the clock. And it's January of 2003, and I've just resigned my very secure, well-paid position with city government in order to build my coaching practice full-time. Now, I didn't walk away with a nice government pension. I actually walked away from a nice government pension. And I have a handful of clients paying me a total, a total of $1,000 a month. And that's just not going to cut it. I have a year or less to build a full practice and replace the income and the benefits that I've just walked away from. Now, I've got to tell you, part of me is really scared. Part of me thinks this may have been the stupidest thing I've ever done. But the other part of me knows, just knows, that this is my purpose. What? I'm sorry. Can you say it one more time? Dave, if we could do, like, mute for a second and maybe also unshare your screen because we're seeing kind of your, we're seeing your schedule and all kinds oh, of really? things. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. I can do that. That's great. And I'm going to ask you to unmute people in a little bit so we can interact. Right. When but I anyways, share my screen again, I will do it properly. <laughs> that's okay. So anyways, you know, guys, part of me is really scared. 
I really think this may have been the stupidest thing I've ever done, taking this risk. But the other part of me knows, it just knows that this is my purpose, this is my passion, this is why God put me on this earth. And I have to make it work. I have to. Not just for me, but for all the people I'm here to serve. And I got to tell you, I struggled at first. I did all the things I now see new coaches and new business owners doing, emphasizing the wrong marketing strategies. But then I got strategic. I took my background in sales and marketing, and I used what I knew from other industries, and I applied it to building a coaching practice. And that's when I started speaking. And I started fairly small at first, speaking to groups and organizations within an hour or so of my home. And whenever I spoke, I offered my audience members the opportunity to do a complimentary coaching session with me. And well over a 1,000 people have taken me up on it along the way. And I'd give them the best of myself, the best of my coaching in those complimentary sessions because that's what I just love to do. And then I learned how to transition from those coaching conversations over to sales conversations in a way that made a real difference. And here's the key. I closed sales because I always did my very best to come from service. And so with that strategy in place, speaking to fill the pipeline, to fill the funnel, followed by good, valuable, one-on-one complimentary sessions that gave people what they wanted and what they needed, I filled my practice and replaced all my income and those benefits I was so scared of giving up in just under a year. And since then, I've more than quadrupled my income using the tools and the strategies we're going to talk about tonight. Now, I'm not telling you this to impress you. I'm telling you this because I truly want to inspire you that you can do the very same thing for your practice. And that's why I'm here tonight, actually. I want to teach you how to do what I did. So I want to give you a quick preview of what we're going to talk about tonight. Because here's the thing. Not only do you have to be a good coach with good coaching skills, but in order to succeed in business, you also have to be good at two very distinct skills. Both of them are absolutely essential, and you can't make it with just one and not the other. First, you've got to be good at marketing. You've got to be good at having solid marketing strategies that attract people towards you, gets them on your radar screen or you on their radar screen so that you can have a continued conversation. And then you've got to be good at the sales part too. And selling is nothing more than finding a way to have a real, genuine, authentic conversation with someone in such a way that it really gives them value, where you're being of service to them, and here's the key, to do it without attachment. So that's where I'm going to concentrate tonight. My business basically concentrates in two basic areas. I help people with their marketing strategies, and I really specialize in helping people who want to go out and do speaking, presentations, live events, virtual, when we can again, virtual events, because speaking is the number one strategy to grow a coaching practice. But then I also help my clients with getting more comfortable, more confident with the sales process. Because, again, you got to have both. And so what I want to concentrate tonight is on showing you how to be real, how to be authentic and genuine and confident in the sales process. Because here's the thing. When you come from that deep place of integrity, 
when you come from that strong desire that I know you have as a coach to serve people, then just because of that, you're automatically more attractive to your potential clients. So, Dave, if you'll show them that first screen, and we're going to talk about, we're going to look at what are the specific things we're going to talk about tonight, okay? Here's what we're going to dig into. So on the next slide, great. First, we're going to look at, nope, back one. Hurry, hurry, back one. We don't want them to see that. <laughs> so we're going to look at the critical factors for success in sales. I'm going to give you the key most important critical factor. Then we're going to look at, how do you make that ask, that ask, that offer for your services? When do you make the ask? How do you make the ask? And then we're really going to dig into how do you coach people through any questions, any concerns, any objections they have in the sales process. And that, when you're, they're thinking about talking to you about hiring you. Okay? And so that's where we're going to really dig in I'm going to give you some key critical principles. I'm going to model some behaviors for you, and then I'm going to ask you to step up to the plate, and I want you to play with me. I want you to try some things on for size because I believe that that's actually where you're going to learn is in actually role-playing and trying these things on versus just learning some concepts. Okay? So, Dave, you can take the screen off for now. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're really going to look at those three critical factors. I want this to be interactive. I want to serve you. So please unmute yourself any point along the way. I want this to be a real conversation, and I'm going to leave time for questions at the end as well. Okay? Does anybody have any questions before we jump in? And you can raise your hand on the box or you can just do this kind of thing and Dave will help me manage that. So I'd like you to all, un yes, up I, there. I, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So if, if uh, the speaking piece, you know, speaking to groups was or is at the heart of you filling your pipeline and given the situation we're in now, does, I mean, I know, and I hope this isn't going to last forever, <laughs> right. um, but uh, th th does it ch change what you're, you know, how you approach things now, given that you can't do the speaking piece? I'm just curious. That's a great question, because obviously it's a question probably on everybody's minds as well, right? So the difference is, here I am in North Carolina. I wasn't oh, able to true. travel to you <laughs> in California, right? So basically, it looks like, at least for right now, all of my engagements for the rest of the year are on Zoom or some sort of webinar format. And notice that it's not one of those webinar formats where there's no interaction and I'm a talking head and all you see are PowerPoint slides, okay? My whole thing is you got to make connections with people, real-life connections, and you only do that. You can do it virtually, right? It's much easier when you guys have your cameras on and I can see you, but you can do it virtually just as well. The difference is you, your numbers may not be as significant as when you're having live events, okay? And some of that is virtual events. I've, I've been doing both live events and virtual events for 17, 18 years, and virtual events will never drive the same numbers as live events. Mm -hmm. And right now, because of the fact that people are nervous, people are anxious, they don't know what's going to happen with our economy, things look so uncertain. So you've got to be willing to kind of roll with the punches and still be willing to serve people and make those connections. Got it. Thank Does you. that answer your question? Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Okay, great. So I want to start by asking you guys a question, okay? So unmute yourself, please. And the question is this. 
what's the purpose of all of your marketing? What's the purpose? Get clients. To get clients, right? Exactly. Seems like a no-brainer. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> but what I did was I actually tricked you. So thank you for playing with me, okay? I want you to consider this. What I'm going to tell you is the purpose of all of your marketing is not to get clients. That the purpose of all of your marketing is to generate complimentary consultations or complimentary coaching sessions depending on your target market and what term you would use with your target market. And here's the key. When you're trying to get clients, what happens is you tend to become a little salesy. You might tend to become a little pushy. And if nothing else, you might try too hard to get that client. And what happens for most coaches is they're so afraid of being salesy and pushy, they go the opposite way, and they're way too timid. And they don't say the things they need to say. They don't ask powerful questions. They don't communicate as directly as they could because they don't want to be salesy and they can't find that middle ground. So what happens is you either become too salesy or pushy or you become too timid, one of the two extremes. And what I tell people is you just get a little weird. You just get a little weird and people feel a little bit of that weirdness, that not genuineness, okay? But instead, when your goal is to generate those complimentary sessions, in the complimentary coaching conversation, you get to know somebody, you get to listen to them fully, you get to demonstrate how coaching can help them with whatever they're dealing with, you get to acknowledge their concerns, and more than anything, you serve them. And when selling becomes about service instead of getting clients, when your objective is to do those complimentary sessions and find your matches, find what I call your peeps, okay, the pressure comes off of you and the pressure comes off of them too. So if you remember not only one thing from our time together today, I want you to remember that the purpose of all of your marketing is to generate that next conversation, that complimentary consultation or coaching session. Okay? So now what I want to talk to you about is when do you make the ask, the ask, that scary old ask, uh, when and how do you make the ask? So I've already given you the hint that the ask happens within the complimentary coaching session. But now I want to show you the structure that I teach of the complimentary session so that you can get a better sense of how that looks, okay? So in my mind at least, I divide a complimentary coaching session into three sections. You have the intro part where you're building rapport, you're getting to know that person a little bit. That's maybe five minutes long. Then you have the middle part, the coaching part, where you're actually coaching somebody on something they bring, they bring to the call, and I'll, I'll explain what, right? And that's maybe 30, 35 minutes or so. And then you have the close, the end, where you make the ask. So we're going to look at each of those areas of the complimentary session, and we're not going to spend so much time in the middle part, the 30, 35 minutes of coaching them, because you're all coaches. That's the part you need to do. You know how to do. We're going to concentrate our time and our effort on the beginning of that call and the end, the bookends of the call, because they're so critically important. Okay? So, Prior to the complimentary session, you've met somebody, maybe they've seen you at a speaking engagement in the North, maybe that they've signed up for a complimentary session there, or you met them at a networking meeting, or they were a referral, however that happened, right? 
And what you want to do is you want to send them an email as quickly after they've scheduled that complimentary session with you so they have something to confirm your call or your appointment with them. Now know that I'm always going to default to call because 99% of my clients are on phone or Zoom, okay? And obviously in the corporate world, you're going to do more of those in person. So, you know, just kind of map that onto your coaching uh, practice and how you do it. So you're going to shoot them an email. You're going to confirm the date of the call, the time of your call, the location. If it's a phone call, who's calling whom. If it's a Zoom call with the Zoom link, you're going to give them all of the logis logistics, all of the details. But then you're also going to pre-program them with three questions to be thinking about for the body of the complimentary session. And you're going to tailor these questions for your target market, okay? The first question are, is, what are three things that you want for yourself, your business, your team, your organization, customize that. But what are your top three goals or what are your top three business objectives in the next year to 18 months? But we want to find out, big broad stroke, what are your top goals or objectives? Second question is, what are the obstacles? Why aren't you there yet? What's been getting in your way to not reach those goals? And that second question is two-part, and you don't want to stray away from the second part because that's kind of the pain question, which is, and what if you never, ever reach those goals? What will that be like for you? And then the third question is, what's your vision? When you've reached those goals, when you've reached the pinnacle, you've achieved those things, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Have them describe their vision. So you're going to pre-program them with those three questions in an email, they don't have to send you their answers, but they're going to reflect on those questions, and that's going to make up the body of the complimentary session. Okay? So I'm going to pause here. Any quick questions about that part? Uh, Denise, I have a question. Yes. In uh, the second part of the questions about what are the obstacles that you that you face now, and then you said why aren't you there yet? Um, you know, I've been told and taught and learned that you know to ask a why question can put them very much on the defensive. Now they get into excuse mode, victim mode, or just defensive mode and get their backs up. Is mm -hmm. so? Would you phrase that a little differently, or, or just like that? And like I was really talking to you about what those questions are when I crafted them in an email. I would say, so what are the obstacles you've been facing? Okay, okay great. And what would it be yep. like for you if you don't reach those goals? But you're absolutely Got right. It. A why question can put somebody on defensive. So I might not, definitely might not put that in writing to them and would be careful using it in the conversation. Great question. Right. Thank you for Thank the you. clarification in that. Okay. Yes. Did I see somebody else? Now, a critical piece that you want to make sure you put into the email with them is also that you have reserved this time just for them and for them to please let you know either immediately or within 24 to 48 hours if they aren't going to be able to make their appointed time. This is going to cut down on your number of no-shows. So what I want to do now, and this will just take a couple minutes, I want to model when somebody picks up the phone in that first couple minutes of the complimentary session with them. Okay? I'm, going to, I'm probably not going to do exactly what I would do in terms of uh, building rapport, but you would spend a minute or so building rapport. You don't want to spend too much time. You don't want them to start chatting and taking over the call, okay? And this is the only time, don't tell ICF Global, this is the only time where you set the agenda, <laughs> you set the agenda for the call. 
you're setting up the call to go a certain way, and you're asking them if it's okay if you tell them that. So I need one of you to be my potential client on the other end of the phone, and you're only going to have to say, "Uh uh-huh, a couple of times. It's pretty simple. So who'd be willing to do that with me? Yes. Jeannie, is that how you say it? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So ring, ring, hello. Hello. Hi, Jeannie. This is Denise. Hi, Denise. It's so nice to have you here with me today. I really enjoyed meeting you at ICF Orange County, and I'm, I'm just happy to have this time with you today. Thank you. So is it okay if I tell you sort of a loose agenda, a sort of outline for our call together today? Would that be okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So number one, and what's most important, is I really want to give you value today. That's my commitment. That's my intention. Now, I don't know exactly what you need, what you want out of this call, but I know that if I come from service and wanting to give you value, and you're open, you're willing to tell me what you're dealing with and that kind of thing, that it should be a win-win. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And so what we're going to do By the way, I'm assuming she's not a coach. What we're going to do is we're going to start out by talking just briefly about what coaching is. So I want to make sure we're on the same page, okay? Okay. And then from there, we're going to spend the bulk of our call, 30, 35 minutes or so, around those questions that I sent you for homework. Okay. Did you have a chance to look at those and reflect on those? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, some at least. Yes, yes, some at least. Okay, good. Excellent. And they're questions about your life, so they're easy enough to answer, okay? Mm-hmm. And, you know, those questions almost always lead us where that person needs to go. So we're going to trust that and see where they take us, okay? Okay. Okay. And then towards the end of the call, I'll probably tell you a little bit more about my coaching and how it works. And if you and I have enjoyed the call together, if we're a good match together, we resonate well together, and this is important, and if I see that there are some things I can truly help you with, if that's the case, then at the end of the call, I'm going to come straight out and I'm going to ask you if you're interested in working together. But there's no obligation around any of that. It really, truly is simply an invitation. Is that okay? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, great. Good. And the last thing I want to make sure that you know is that everything you tell me is absolutely confidential. Mm. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, good. And do you have any questions before we start? No, I'm kind of just curious. Okay, good. Great. Thank you, Jeannie, for working with me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. So quickly, what did you guys hear in that? What was important about what I did? You laid out the framework of the whole time we'd be spending together. So it was building trust and it was um, letting me know what to expect. So I could, my anxiety could come down. Mm-hmm. Some people are going to be excited. Some people are going to be nervous. Some people are going to be both. So you're creating the space of safety, right? So she knows what to expect or he knows what to expect. Good. What else? What else did you guys hear? Can you hear the New Yorker in me? What did you guys hear? <laughs> <laughs> by, by, stating, by stating that um, you're going to have an ask at the end, it lets – the, co- the person being coached know, and it also might take the pressure off of you f- from a coaching perspective because you're not holding that in the back of your mind. Bingo. Good. It's got a double focus. So what, is it, what do people think when they get something for free? There's always a catch. There's always a catch, right? <laughs> Go take a test drive, and what's going to happen the minute you get out of yeah. that car? Right? 
So they're waiting, they're thinking there's some catch. So I'm taking the curse off of it, right? I'm telling them if these certain conditions are met, I'm going to ask them at the end of the call. So that allows them to take the pressure off them, hopefully have them be more present so they can really be present to the coaching, right? And it gives you a place, a container to make the ask. You know, guys, I don't have much sales resistance, sales hesitation, but I got to tell you, if I didn't have a place to make that ask, where the heck would I just bring that up? You're coaching them, you're coaching them, you're coaching them, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, what do you think, right? So I'm taking the curse off of it. I'm telling them when it's going to happen, and it is. You were brilliant. Michael, in that because it also puts a place for you to have to ask if those conditions are met. Okay? Good? Any questions about any of that so far? All right. The setting up of the call, that those first few minutes are just as important as any other place in that call. I'm building trust and intimacy. I'm letting them know it's a safe place, that it's confidential. I'm letting them know what we're going to do, and I'm taking the curse off it with the offer by letting them know when that's going to happen. Okay? From there, if they aren't a coach, you're going to go into either asking them to describe what coaching is to you, or you describe it to them, and then you go right into the three questions. So let's talk. Tell me about what are your top goals? What did you put down? What did you discover? And that leads you right into the coaching piece, which is about 30 to 35 minutes long. Now, at some point, right in that period, and this has got to come from your intuition. It's got to come right in here from your heart and your gut. You're going to tell them how you might be able to help them. So those are the key words, and I'm going to model it for you in a little bit. But it's basically, is it okay if I tell you how I think I can help? That how piece, which explains your process, is the key words. Those are the key words that lead you towards making the ask. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I do, I want to go over some elements so you'll be able to hear those elements in the modeling that I'm going to do. Okay. So 75 to 85% of the people you talk to are going to have some kind of questions, concerns, or objections. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you an opportunity to talk to them about what's on their mind, okay? So there's only seven main objections. So unmute yourselves and tell me, what are the main objections? There's seven of them. Let's see if you can get them all. It costs too much. What are the money? How much does it cost? Money is, some people say money, 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 money is all seven (laughs) objections, right? Okay. So money's number one. Phyllis, I heard you say something, too. I was also saying the the fee. Money. Money, money, money. Okay, what else? I just don't have the time. I'm really sorry. I don't have the time. Good. I don't think I need it. Anyway. Ah, I don't think I need it. I'm going to call that I'm unsure of the value of this. Okay? And that's probably the most dangerous objection of all. Right? Because if you don't see value, what's the point? Good. I have to to ask my partner permission. I have to ask my partner, whether it's a partner in life, a partner in business, or my boss, or whoever. I've got to ask a third party, right? What else? What else have you heard? I want to... Uh Uh-oh. Get another opinion? Um, that's, that's where I, w- I wasn't going there, but you got one. Um, I want to check out other coaches or other right. providers, right? Okay, so that's another one, right? 
I want to get a reference or a testimonial. Okay. So that's another of checking out references, providers, that kind of thing. There's How about I need to think about it? I ah, perfect. I want to think <laughs> about it. Good. So, Dave, put them up on the screen so they can see them and jot them down and see if we missed anything, right? So we have money. I want to think about it. I don't have the time. I need to consult with a third party. <clears throat> oh, the one we kind of missed was I'm not ready right now. I want to talk with other providers or I want to try and do it myself. And then the last one, which is some version of I'm unsure of the value. Okay? Now, when I work with clients individually, there is a way to deal with each one of these objections. But what I can give you tonight is I can give you the broad strokes. So you'll get 75% of the way on how to deal with objections as a whole because there's a formula for doing this, okay? And I call it my four A's. Dave, show them the four A's. So as you're entering into this phase of the complimentary session and somebody says, I have this objection about time or money or whatever, the first thing you want to do is ask their permission to talk about it some more. It is not okay just to run in and coach them without their permission. Okay. That's what your used car salesman does. They try to overcome your objection, right? And they don't respect you. They don't ask your permission. Is it okay if we talk about that some more? It can be that simple. Now, number one and number two on that list can be done at the same time, and it doesn't matter which order as long as you do both of them, okay? So you want to acknowledge your concern. Yeah, you're right, Michael. That is a lot of money. Is it okay if we talk about that some more? You're right. It is going to take some time. It's probably a good idea to talk to your partner about this. Is it okay if we talk about that a little bit more and how you might go about that? So make sure you ask permission and acknowledge their concern. Okay? And you ask permission in the beginning of the coaching through objections phase and you ask permission throughout the process, okay? As you delve deeper into that, you say things like, is it okay if I ask you another question? Or is it okay if I ask you a hard question? Okay? So those two are critical. The third A is ask questions. I used to have a, a sign that was up on my wall when I was coaching. It was W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? <laughs> right? Okay? So during this phase, you want to be curious. You want to ask lots of questions. Okay? Not in a way that's confronting, but still you're going to stay a coach. You're going to be a coach asking questions. The whole idea is here, if you're making too many declarative statements, Instead of asking questions, the probability is that you're going to devolve into convincing or persuading if you're doing more of the talking. Okay? So in this phase, it's so important to ask lots of questions and never stop being a coach. My, my husband used to say to me, we teach our speakers boot camps together, and he used to say to me, why do coaches think they have to stop being coaches when it comes to the sales process? They actually have more of the skills than anybody else. And so that's why I want to teach you how to use the very same core competencies, those coaching skills, during this part without getting too weirded out because you're attached to a certain outcome. And then the last day is always schedule the next step. I hear from clients all the time, well, they're going to think about it and they're going to give me a call. And I'm like, no, they're not. No, they're not. Okay? 
their, the possibility of what they saw for themselves is going to fade away, and every day that goes by, they're going to convince themselves more and more they, that they didn't see that possibility. And so what you want to do is somebody, after you've coached them through their objection, you've talked about it a bit, you've answered their questions, and they still want to think about it, in this terms, your S's and your C's are still going to need to think about it. They don't make decisions on the spot. And so you say to them, great, do you have everything you need to make a good decision? Yes. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay, so let's schedule a time within a week or so where we can get back together, get any questions answered, and then from there you, we can talk about what choices you want to make at that point. Get it on the calendar. And notice I said within a week or so, so that possibility doesn't fade away. So you want to always be doing those four steps, and that will get you 75 to 80% of the way. Okay? Dave, you can take the slides down now. So any questions before I model this for you? Anything unclear? Give the people on the phone a chance to ask, ask if they want. What are you drinking? Water. Dave said I could have wine, and I said I never have wine before I speak because you never know what this girl might say. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, Phyllis. First of all, I just want to share for a minute that I heard you speak about six or seven years ago in New Jersey in an ICF chapter. I, I, hired, I hired you to help me, and you're an amazing coach. So I just wow. want to give you a little, little testimonial right now that you're excellent in helping coaches to get clients. Um, Thank you, Phyllis. You're very welcome. You really are. You're definitely uh, excellent. That's why I'm here. I'm in Florida, and I decided when I saw this that I had to join the call. Um, so my only question is, when, and one thing that I don't do is if somebody doesn't choose to hire me on the spot, I don't set up another conversation. If they said they want to get back to me, I'll email them a couple days later, you know, looking forward to the possibility of working with you, but I don't make another appointment. When you make your second appointment, what is your close rate then? Is it, does that work much better? Oh, that's a great question. So remember, if somebody's a no, they're clearly a no, you don't schedule this the next step. Maybe. I have to think about These it. These are for your maybes. Okay. Your close rate on your may my close rate on my maybes is about one out of three. Okay. Okay. On the second, on the second conversation. On the second conversation. Very good. Okay. Very good. Now here's a key: if somebody will not set up a second conversation with you, and that doesn't happen a lot, maybe five to ten percent of the time, that's their way of saying no. Exactly. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Other questions? All right. So I want a potential client to come to me, one of you guys to model this with me, and I want you to come with me, to me with one objection. Please don't throw all seven objections at me to see if I throw all the spaghetti up on the wall. What's she going to do with that, okay? So... There may be an objection underneath the objection. I understand that. And it's so funny. Usually I pick somebody who gives me every objection in the book. So think of the objection you want to give. And who wants to be my potential client? You don't have to be the coach. You just have to be the client saying all the objections, not all the objections you've ever heard, but giving me an objection to hiring you. Okay, I'll play. Okay, Raphael. No, but I could be Raphael. Oh, I saw his hand up. No, take Raphael. He's much quieter than I am. Take Raphael. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Take Raphael. Okay, Raphael, I think you're it. <laughs> do you have an objection okay, in mind? Th thank you, Cumber. Um, yes, I do. Okay. So remember, guys, I haven't done a full 30, 35 minutes of coaching with Raphael. It's much easier when I've already coached him and know what he's up to, right, all of that. But we're going to play with this anyways, okay? 
And so I've already, we're going to, are you going to be a coach who's building their practice or are you going to be some other kind of client? Who are you, Raphael? I, I am a, um, the owner of a uh, small business in Irvine. Okay. Owner of a small business in Irvine. And what kind of small business? Just so I... Um, I have a, a, a coffee shop. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I've already told him at some point, here's how I think I can help you with these concerns. Okay, so remember, sharing your process is important. Here's how I think I can help. Raphael says, hmm, that sounds pretty good. And then I say to him, so what do you think? Would you like to work together? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it'll be great, um, you know, being uh, supported by a coach like you and uh, help me figure out how to uh, move forward with, uh, with the business. Mm -hmm. So it would be great to have a support system to help you move forward. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I think that, that, that could be great, yes. Okay. And? Do you have any concerns or objections? I think that the time is not right. That's, that's my, my, my concern because um, I had to uh, lay off uh, half of my, you know, uh, employees. And, um, Please don't give uh, me the I, COVID objection because that would just be way too hard at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, okay. Okay. okay, you so, can give me another money objection, but, I mean, we want to have something where we have some hope of, you know, working around it, okay? Okay, that's that, fair enough. Okay, um, great, thank you. Fair enough. I'm in a cash crunch right now. Um, I just, I'm just sending uh, my, my uh, uh, you know, daughter to college, mm -hmm. and, um, and the, the business is not doing well, doing well and... Um, I'm in a cash crunch right now. So cash flow, it's not there, right? The business isn't doing as well as you wanted, as well as you hoped for. You've got extra expenses, right? Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, that's why I think that timing may not really play on my, on my side right now. The time might just not be right right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you like to talk about that some more and see, dig into that? Or are you pretty darn sure the time is not right and you just want me to let you go? I really want to, uh, uh, to get help on this. Um, but um, based on what I know today, um, I, I don't know, I mean, where, where actually to get the money to, to, to support um, an additional, you know, um, cost to, to, to the business. But uh, I, I'd really like to, to find a way, yeah. So you'd like to find a way, and yet you know it's going to be a stretch, right? It's going to be a real investment uh, in the business. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're not sure where you're going to find that money. Things are tight. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I, I'd like to to figure out how to to make it happen if, if possible. Yeah. Okay. So, would you like to talk about how we might be able to make that possible? What are your options? Yeah, I'm open. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, tell me what you're thinking. What could you do? What might you do? to be able to invest in this? Since this is a cash flow type of issue, perhaps if, if um, the timeline would be, you know, not so restrictive that I could somehow secure enough cash on, on the front end of the engagement so that um, I, I could, you know, um, manage to, to move for the first couple of months and then 
I, I, I'm confident that, uh, you know, the, the, the situation may change in my favor and then I can um, deal with the rest of the commitments. I don't know. So if you could find a way to fund the first couple months of coaching so you had that taken care of, there wouldn't be the anxiety of that, then you would think that then things might loosen up for you to be able to fund the rest of the coaching. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think, yes, I, I think so. I, I would need to take a look at it, but uh, yes, in, in principle, yeah. Okay, in principle it would work, and then we got to look at reality too. Yeah. we got to look at budgets. That exactly. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know you need X amount of money to fund the first couple months of coaching, right? And that yes. looks like a big chunk of money right now. Um, yes. What possible ways that feel right to you, not anything that feels off or too much pressure or anxiety, are there any ways that you can see to loosen that up for yourself? Perhaps, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't know what, what your, your uh, normally payment plan look like. I, so if I understand a little bit more of what you're expecting, and then perhaps I, I can actually tell you uh, to what extent I can actually make it uh, or, okay. or ask for, for changes. Possible. So we've already, let's intend here that we've already talked about my fees. I've given them a couple oh. options of fees, right? And so, Raphael, typically coaching is paid for a month at a time, okay? And it's likely that coaching is paid on the first of the month for that month of coaching. It's also possible that you could divide your coaching into two payments, okay? So instead of having to come up with all of it on the first of the month, you could do half on the first, half of the 15th, on the 15th. And typically, I'm not going to recommend you go into debt. I'm not saying that at all. But typically, my clients pay for by credit card or debit card for their coaching. So that's the typical things. And so mm. I see your wheels turning. Mm. What are you thinking? Okay, yeah. I, I, I think that if we can, if we can set the payments, would it be possible to set the payments at the end of the month rather than at the beginning of the month? Okay. So that, would give me, that would give me one month, uh, you know, to, to deal with, with the cash and then try to keep, you know, uh, on time for, for uh, my commitments with you. Got it. So I'm just going to pause the role play here, Okay. Did you see the possibility light up in his eyes about he's trying to make it work? Now, I'm not saying the pain at the end of the month. Did anybody other than me see his eyes? They went up. He's looking for an answer. And I saw his eyes light up, his face lighten up just then, right? So we're now into a conversation. Notice I'm not overcoming anything with him. I'm having a conversation about some possibilities, okay? And notice that I'm not rushing this conversation. I'm taking my time. I'm acknowledging his concerns. I'm giving him space to think, okay? That's critically important. It's when you're trying to get the client somewhere because you have an agenda that you tend to get in your own way. So thank you, Raphael. I appreciate may, may you. May I also say, uh, may, uh, you know, make a comment? Yes. I also, I also felt that the heavy lifting was always on me. So you, you, you didn't come up with recommendations or suggestions. Or, the heavy lifting was always on me, which, was, which is good. I mean, you, you played the coaching role. And uh, so it was always me, you know, answering the question and trying to come up with ways to, to, to make it work. Yes. Because if he wants to make it work, he's going to come up with ways, right? And we could have talked about 
in a full coaching session with him, remember, I know what his goals are. I know more about the problems he's facing. We've already talked about where my fees are, that kind of thing, which you guys had to kind of fill in the blank and make up. So, but you can see that the heavy lifting was on him, and my job was just to probe. I was just being a coach. Okay? So I want to make sure you have a chance to try this because there's critical little pieces that I want to make sure you put into place. Okay? So the easy role, who's going to be the client with an objection? So Gary will be the client. Excellent. Thank you. And who's going to be the coach? And I'll help you. I'll whisper in your ear if you need it. Who's going to be the person who has a breakthrough around sales because they're willing to be the coach? This is where I play the Jeopardy music. Do, do, do. Thank you so okay, much. Then I, that. Sure. I appreciate it. And if I find a way to help you, I might whisper a little bit. They get to hear it, unfortunately, because we're not in the same room. I can't just whisper <laughs> in your ear. Okay? But we are going to start, Chad, with the idea of, so what do you think? Would you like to work with me? Okay? Okay. Gary, I, I really enjoyed our conversation, uh, and I can see us really working together. What do you think? Would you like to work together? Um, I think so. Are you sure about that, or are you thinking about it, Gary? Well, I'm thinking about it, but I, um, I'm okay. open to it. Great. Great. That's a great start, Gary. Now, what are you thinking about? What's, what's, uh, what's stopping us from saying yes tonight? Okay, let's pause that right there. You're doing really good so far. So if you just stopped at what are you thinking about, Gary will tell you. Oh, you moved on my screen. Gary will tell you what he's thinking versus what are you thinking about what's stopping you begins to sound a little bit salesy, doesn't it, guys? So just ask him. I love that question. So what are you thinking about? So, Gary, what are you thinking about? Well, I've got a bunch of different things on my mind. I'm thinking about money and whether or not I can afford it. And I'm thinking about whether or not I have the time to do, do this. And I need to check with my business partner to make sure that she's okay with it. So those Gary, are, those are Gary, things give I'm them, thinking about. Oh, good. Give them one Anything of them. else, Gary? <laughs> Gary, give them one of them, maybe two. That's all? Okay. That's all you got? <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking about money and my business partner because my business partner doesn't like to say yes. The, the term getting to yes doesn't resonate with her. So it's hard to convince her to try anything new. So um, I have to determine if we can afford it and two, can I get a business partner to agree to it? All right, Gary, I mean, those are, those are valid uh, concerns that you've got. Yeah, money's important, right? And whether we can afford it or not is important, sure. What, what would you think would stop you from being able to afford it? And you could acknowledge his second concern, too. You've got two concerns, Gary. Yes, it's your business partner. Well, um, it's a matter of cash flow. You know, I need to figure out if we have enough money to pay it. You know, we've talked about the the payments. It's a lot of money. Is there any way I can help you figure out how to make those payments happen, Gary? Charge me less. <laughs> so, Chad, I'd be happy to do that. I'll just give you less of my time. That's all. Let's back up just a tiny bit, and I want to ask the group, because you're doing a great job, and I want to thank you for doing this. Which part of this, the four A's, did he not do yet? Do you Ask know, Chad? Permission. Oops. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So back up, Chad, and let's start again, because you're doing great. 
I want you to slow okay. down yeah. just a little bit because I think you're trying to go too fast. And, of course, you're under pressure. You're in front of your peers, and I appreciate you doing this. And now validate his concerns that you heard and ask permission, okay? Gary, you know, I mean, those are – your concerns here are very valid. Money is always important and definitely checking in with your, your business partner to see how she feels about it. I mean, those are, those are valid things. Would it be okay if we talk about it a little bit more? Sure. So what do you most want to know right now, Chad? What might be, what might be helpful for Gary to figure out the, the money situation. What what could we talk about there to help you figure out how to make that uh, monthly coaching fee happen? Okay. So is that your agenda or his agenda? Well, I think that was his agenda. I mean, he talked about he was unsure how he could afford it. So he gave you two objections, afford it and right. my business partner. Yeah. Partner, what right. might you ask him just out of curiosity when he's given you those two objections? Gary, which one do you think is it w would be the biggest concern for you? Good. Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> he's not helping us. But you notice you went your agenda was the money, right? A little bit more. Yeah. But finding uh, yeah. out what his agenda is, what his concern uh, is. So they're both. So, Gary, okay, that's totally valid. I get it. I'm not trying to prioritize one over the other. But could I ask you another question about about those then? Sure. Good. Well, just tell me a bit more about your business partner. Where do you think she's coming from in all of this? Have you told, talked to her about the fact that we're having our conversation this evening? Yes. Oh, oh good. What, what was her response to that when you told her? She thought it was a waste of time, and I shouldn't waste my time doing it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, everyone's entitled to their opinion, I guess. What, what, what was your thought when she said that? Well, I thought she was being difficult as always. Um, <laughs> the problem is she's my partner and I need to get her to agree. I need to get her to yes on this. Okay. All right. Any, anything, any thoughts that you have, any ways that you could not convince her, but just to show her the, the value that she's not seeing in what we're talking about? I thought maybe you could talk to her. Well, it's funny you should say that. I thought that might be a good idea as well, maybe. Maybe, have you, have you, did you enjoy our session tonight, Gary? Did you get some value out of it? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, and that makes me feel good right there, because that, that's what we were, that was our agreement for tonight. Just let's have a conversation and see see where we go and how we feel about it. But maybe what we could do is see if she'd be uh, willing to, to do a similar complimentary session and look at things from her perspective. How about that? That would be great. Excellent. Okay. Notice what he okay. just did. He's not going to try to convince the business partner of the value. He's going to give the business partner a clear complimentary session all of her own and have her experience the value. Great job. Good. And Gary, you know, if, if, if our session, my session with your, your partner goes as well as ours did, do you think that other concern would be as large, loom as large with the money as it does right now for you? Well, mm -hmm. we're still going to have to find the money. I get so, that. Of um, course. I get that. All right. So can, can I ask you one more question about that then? Yeah. All right, if, if she's on your side all of a sudden and there's two of you trying to figure it out, do you think you might put your brain power together and we could figure out how, how to you're, make it happen? You're trying to get him to say yes, aren't yeah, you? I am. You're trying to I get him. Been, he's being very stubborn. He's Damn it. Very I've learned a yes. Stubborn. Let's go, Gary. Let's go, Gary. Here's where you could go, okay? You're doing a great job, and here's a place you could go. And I want to go back up to another place you could have gone. Gary, okay if I ask you another question? Sure. Let's set your business partner aside just for a second. We'll come back to her. Do okay. you see the value in our coaching? Would you be willing, if you could find the money, would you be willing to invest in coaching to solve the problems we've been talking about today? Yes. 
what we haven't discovered earlier is that he, whether or not he clearly sees the value. Now, it would have been an even better question if I said, what value do you see in coaching? Not a yes, no, closed question, right? But Gary, what value did you see in our coaching tonight that could really help you? Well, I um, can see that it would help me manage my team more effectively. And it would hopefully improve my relationship with my business partner. So we'd be able to get more things done rather than argue so much. Yeah. Did anybody want to ask him when he was talking earlier about his business partner? Like, do you two have a kind of advers adversarial relationship? Is it really, I wanted, I don't know exactly the question I wanted to ask because it's been a while since he said it, but did anybody intuitively get the hit that maybe we need to talk about their relationship and not just the money in this? Yeah, and that's what brought it back to that. So, chat, you did a really great job. What did you learn from that? What, what would you take away and do differently because of that? Yeah, I think uh, the one thing that I try very hard with my, with my clients to do is to take my time in, in kind of the, the discovery phase of a session. You know, don't necessarily think that their, their first uh, point of discussion is, is, the most, um, is the most pressing one for them, that there may be more to it than that. And I feel like with, with Gary in a closing situation, I was trying a little, I was a little too anxious to get to the close. And, and not taking that same amount of time, just let it let it ruminate a little bit. Let it let's let's let it develop a little bit. And not be afraid of it. You know, yeah. embrace the embrace the concern as opposed to trying to squash it. Yeah, let it breathe. Let the concern come yeah, out. Let it breathe. Talk about it more. Have be dis in discovery. And it was kind of clear, even with how fast you were going with some of your questions, that you were trying to get to a result. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But you did, still, you ask great questions, and you got a major learning, right? So to mm -hmm. review for you guys, ask permission, and be sure to ask permission along the way, okay? Yep. Acknowledge their concern. Don't try to get to them to a yes as much as be curious, be interested. Like you said, go into discovery of why are they feeling that way, Okay and continue to ask lots of questions. Anything else you learned, Chad, that was important? Uh, I, well, I like the, the four A's, uh, and I did not, uh, to your point, I did not take, take full advantage of them, of them at the beginning. Uh, of course, that's, that's just uh, getting comfortable with it and the practice and then the routine of it. So I like that. We also didn't get to the final A of, of, of always scheduling a follow-up and, uh, keeping keeping myself somewhat in in charge of that follow up, you know, mm -hmm. so it actually happened. So but that would have been the, the final thing. And one of the places you did get to, which is what you would do whenever there's a third party objection, is you want to talk to that third party, and you want to offer that third party the opportunity to do a full complimentary coaching session with you. And you did a really yeah. great job with that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and that would have been the probably the final step would have been to see. All right, how do we how do we schedule something? Get something on the books with with the, your partner. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So keep in mind that what I do is I schedule. I tell folks that where our complimentary sessions are about forty five minutes long. I ask them to reserve an hour because if you're going to have this kind of conversation and not feel rushed, oh, my God, i got to close them before it's five minutes of the hour, right, kind of thing, you got to have time, like you said, to let it breathe. Okay? Questions or comments from anybody else in the room? Something I noticed, Denise, when you were uh, coaching Raphael, was that you very early on gave him an out so that he didn't feel trapped. So it was like, you know, if it's, if, if you really want to find the money, no, it was something about if you, if you know that there is no way that you will get the money, then I can let you go. Or would you like to explore that? And I thought that was very right. powerful. 
it was basically, would you like to talk about that some more, or should I just let you go, right? And if somebody says, I can't pay the mortgage next month, I, there's no way I can take on coaching, you know, basically we're done, then you really know that, Dave, because you're asking them that clearly. Good, good catch. Good. Anybody else? I have a question. I'm, a, I'm, um, I'm not familiar with inviting the third party to have a coaching session. Uh -huh. so somebody who says, oh, my wife, I have to talk to my wife or I have to talk to my business partner, but you offer, you actually do offer to coach them? Not every time, Phyllis, but it's, if it seems appropriate, like it did in this situation, that this business partner is the sticking point, right? And he can't do anything without that permission and without, I'm not going to send Gary back to try to convince that person of the value, Right. So I think he really did the right thing, but doesn't mean that always. Oftentimes it's enough to say, say it's a husband-wife thing. You might say, so I think it makes sense. I mean, in marriages, you make decisions together, and coaching is an investment. And so you want to talk to your wife about that. What questions do you think she might ask you that we haven't talked about yet? So I'm not necessarily going to offer the wife a complimentary session, but I want that person to be prepared for that conversation and what they need to know. Very good. Okay? Good. good. Yes. I got, I got really excited when I heard about the business partner problem because now I have two potential clients, not one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. One sounds like she might be problematic, but we'll see. They all are. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Learnings, comments? I, I really liked um, how asking permission to talk about it some more, how it just softened and deepened the conversation. Mm -hmm. it, it felt less about it, an agenda and more about having a genuine conversation. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the way, that question, so what are you thinking? is a great question. When I give somebody my pricing of two packages, package A is this much, package B is this much, and then I shut up, okay? I let them think. I let them process. If the quiet silence goes on long, too long or long enough that I feel some uncomfortableness, I'll, say, I'll just say, so what are you thinking? And then they tell me. You ask somebody what they're thinking, like Chad did, and they say, this is what's on my mind. That gives you the opportunity to talk about what's on their mind. Okay, good. Anybody else? Denise, I also think uh, in, in this example, what we didn't have is the benefit of the 35 minutes you spent. You know, so I would imagine if rapport has been built and good listening took place that but that also plays into this, which of course we can't see here, you know, in this setting. Absolutely. Um, and what you haven't seen, Douglas, is also not only the 35 minutes, but here's how I think I can help you and where I lay out my process customized to that person of how I do think I can help. So we haven't had the, and we had to kind of compress it all in. You're right. It gives you a lot more rich material because now you know that person. Denise, Good. Did you want to add anything else? The, the key takeaway for me here tonight was that when you talk about the three parts of your session, uh, you really, when you move from the coaching to the ask, you never stopped coaching. Perfect. And that was really key. Perfect. Don't stop being a coach because you think you're in the sales process. You have more skills around sales by simply asking good, solid questions, okay? Perfectly. I couldn't have said it any better. Thank you for stating that. Thank you. So I want to under – oh, yes, yes. Um, I was just going to say I think what's the, – the biggest difference for me with this is when you said there's no attachment, you know, w without attachment – and the whole time I'm thinking that is just so <laughs> not the type of sales I am used to. Like they just want to do anything to get you to say that yes. 
They don't care if you go into debt. And so just having zero attachment to this whole discovery call and just like, if it's right for you, fantastic. If it's not, I'm not going to try to talk you into anything that you're not ready for or you can't afford. Um, it's just, it's honestly such a different approach than it's absolutely well, different and that yep. works for you <laughs> it does because then the person knows that i care about them and i right. want them to make the best decision for them even if that decision isn't me right i can't yeah. tell you how many times people have convinced somebody to be a client and that client either disappears after a week or a month or becomes a problematic client because they had objections that got stomped on to begin with. Yeah, and it's like they were forced into the deal. Exactly. You know. Very and cool. And you, you never want your client to feel that way, right? You right. would never do that in any regular coaching session. Here's the answer. Do it this way. <laughs> Why would you do it in the sales process? Right. Yeah, I love brilliant, it. Brilliant, brilliant takeaways. So I want to give you some extra takeaways that I see, okay? So the purpose of all of your marketing is not to get clients. What is the purpose of all of your marketing? Comp sessions. Complimentary sessions. Excellent. And the complimentary session, okay, the value of that complimentary session is it gives you the ability to serve somebody to truly serve them and to demonstrate how your coaching can help them, can add value, okay, to what they want, to what they need. It's a demonstration of value, not a convincing of value. Then, of course, you have to find a way, a comfortable yet authentic way to offer you and your services as a viable solution and the best way to do that without attachment are the four A's. Always acknowledge the client, their concerns, their words, and the feelings behind the concerns. Ask their permission throughout the process. Ask lots of questions. Wait, why am I talking? Don't talk, ask questions. And always schedule the next step. So the key is to take something that you've heard today and put it in action so you can have a life and a business that fulfills and supports you in every way. Mrs. Hedges, okay? what are the four A's again, please? Yes. Acknowledge, ask permission, ask lots of questions, and always schedule the next step. Okay? Thank you. So, you know, the things we talked about tonight, they aren't brain surgery, are they? The concepts are pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy. But here's what I found, that it actually takes a lot of practice to really learn the strategies to not have an agenda. And it takes, as somebody pointed out, a really a whole different way of being to master the skills that we're talking about tonight, that we're showing you tonight. So you might be somebody who wants to be more effective and more authentic in the conversations you're already having with people, with the potential clients that are coming in the door. You want to be more effective, more genuine, more service-based in those conversations. Or maybe you need help on the marketing side. You might even be thinking about using speaking as a way to grow your practice. Either way, if you're somebody who's really serious about wanting to grow and expand your practice, if you're serious, ready to do the work, you're committed to do the work, then consider partnering with me. And guess what? It's no surprise that all starts with what? A complimentary consultation. So a complimentary consultation with me has three purposes. First, you'll see what kind of impact my coaching can have on you, your practice, your bottom line. You get to check me out, see if I might be the right coach for you. 
And frankly, I'm going to check you out too because I want to make sure that you're the right kind of client for me. It's free. We'll do it over the phone. And there's no obligation. There's no point at which I become a used car salesman. What you see tonight is what you get. So if you want to take advantage of this, I promise you that you'll get value out of the call and we'll have fun together. So if this is something you'd like to do, I'm asking you to set up a complimentary coaching session with me simply by emailing me. Dave, if you'll put up my email address, that'd be great. So all you have to do before you go to bed tonight, Pacific time, is shoot me an email and say, yes, I would like to do a complimentary coaching session with you. Okay? I work best with high achievers. I work best with people who take action. And so that's why I'm saying do it before you go to bed tonight. Do it before the possibility fades away. Okay? And I promise you that you'll get value out of our time together. So we have a few minutes together, and I just want to see if you have any last questions, if there's any way I can serve you in the time that we have left. What haven't I answered tonight? Hi, Denise. Yes. Um, I'm on the phone. Um, I just have a quick question for you. Thank you so much for your demo and all your awesome tips. They're fantastic. I'm just curious because when I first came to coaching myself, I was really on the edge. I was teetering. I wasn't sure of the value. I thought I needed it, but the investment scared me and I felt like it was a gamble. So I'm just curious when you come into situations and you sense that from someone, like, can you sense that? Do you kind of get that vibe off of people, even if they're too polite to tell you that truth? I think that if you're really listening, you can hear it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And you yeah. wanna you wanna listen for what they're saying and what they're not saying. And so yeah. if you get that kind of intuitive hit, then you wanna ask them, you know what? Again, I ask a ton of permission. You know, I'm getting a sense today of something and I don't know if it's right, but is it okay if I ask you a question? I'm mm-hmm. getting this sense that you're unsure of the value. It seems like a gamble. It seems like, you know, there's no, it doesn't, coaching doesn't come with any guarantees. Are you feeling that way at all? Great. Okay, so when you get those intuitive hits, you just check it out. You ask. And see how it lands. Mm-hmm. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Did that help? It did. I don't know about you guys, but there are times when my body talks to me, when a client or potential client isn't saying something they need to say, or I'm not asking something I need to ask, my throat gets all weird, and I start "Eh, eh, eh," coughing, and I'm like, okay, what are they not, is there something I'm not saying, is there something they're not saying, and every time I say to the client, you know, my throat's getting all weird, is there something you're not telling me? And bam, they burst into tears and tell me what it is. So Wow, I love that. Pure intuition. Listen to your body. Listen to your intuition, Jill, and it won't lead you astray. Because you can always check it out. They can say, no, I'm not feeling this. I'm feeling this. Completely. Great. Any other questions? Okay, let's hear just quick from a couple of people. What's a gem for you? What did you learn today? Or maybe what did you take away from my offer that taught you about coming from service? Any one of those things. Who would like to share? Oh, oh. Yes. Um, I, I, uh, I dig your acronym, uh, Why Am I Talking? <laughs> Not that I talk a lot, but, but I like that. So thank you for that. You're very welcome, Camber. Thank you. Who else? I, I loved um, the asking permission part a lot because I just felt like the guards 
just go down and you're on that, you know, you're not on, you're on their side, if you will. And the whole, like your whole approach is about the client and it's just not salesy. It's just about supporting them, serving them and having them win. And yeah. just the whole time, like, I feel like the guards just go down. You get it. You know, that's what I, that was my gem from all of this. Excellent. Thank you. Well said. You're on the same side of the negotiation table, right? It's not this. Think about when that salesperson is trying to convince you of something. They're trying to tell you why your concerns are unfounded or why you're wrong. Then your guard goes way up, right? But if just somebody says, hey, is it okay if we talk about that a little bit? Oh, sure. I'm not going to say no, generally, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. One more. I think we have think a minute for one more takeaway. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I said at the beginning that I could really kind of relate to the fear of sales. Um, and so for me, the learning is don't do it. Coach instead. And I'm not scared of that. Yeah, I love that. You're not scared of coaching. You're not scared of service. Mm -hmm. Always, always, always come from service. Never stop being a coach. And it will not lead you astray. Very good, Dave. Okay. I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. I love speaking. I love teaching and training. To me, it's the funnest thing you can do. So thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be with you. And if I can ever be of service, please don't hesitate to ask. My website's denisehedges.com. There's a bunch of free stuff on there. You can sign up for my newsletters. Please do stay in touch. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Denise. That was ma magnificent. I can't thank you, Denise. Thank I'm, you. I'm holding the space bar down. Um, thank you all for being here this evening. It was wonderful, especially those of you who've come from a long way away. So Phyllis joining us from Florida. Was there anyone else that was from out of county or out of state? So everyone else is San Francisco. County. San Francisco. Wonderful. Gary's from Palm Springs. There we go. <laughs> so this time, same time, same place, probably a different Zoom link. June the 18th, we have a speaker whose name I cannot see looking at the website, but um, the talk is about managing the emotional brain during challenging times. And I don't know if you can think of any challenging times that you might be going through, but that sounds like something, a very useful topic to be, to be talking about. So I look forward to seeing all of you on June the 18th, 6 okay. p.m. 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening or night. Thank you. And take Thank really you. good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much, Thanks, Denise. Denise. Bye -bye. That was really Thank great, you. Denise. Thank you. Thank you. It was very authentic and you really modeled coaching for us. So thank you for that. Oh, very welcome. Yeah. And chat, thank here, you here. for playing with me. <laughs> you're welcome. It's great. Enjoyed it. You're, Enjoyed you're a it. super brave chat. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to get Gary next time. You wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank bye you bye for everybody. coming, everyone. Ciao. Bye. Have a good everyone. evening. Good bye night. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Dave, for hosting. My pleasure. Great good job. You. You. Yeah. Way to Thank go. Thank you, kind sir. Good to see you, Doug. <laughs> this was really good, right? It was good. Yeah, it was very good. She was really good. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah I did learn a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Thank you, you so soon. much, Dave. Yeah, yes. My pleasure. See you. Take care. Okay. Ciao. Good Bye. night.